welcome to TFI. A couple of words of warning before I get cracking with this video. This video is indeed going to be excruciatingly, painfully, mind-bendingly boring to anybody that doesn't use Vault Professional or Vault Workgroups, but if you suffer from insomnia, then this might do you the world of good. I, I don't know, I don't know, it's not a very exciting topic, uh, but if you do use Vault Professional and Vault Workgroups, then uh, I know I'm selling this really well, I know. Uh, but it might clarify a few things to people that do use Vault Professional, right? So as per the title, it's to do with the Triangle of Doom, which I must stress again before we get cracking. Uh, you won't have heard of that expression. You won't have heard of that terminology because it doesn't exist. It's something I've made up. It's not an official Autodesk term. Uh, but I've used the Triangle of Doom as an expression in every company I've ever worked for. And it's been kind of lovingly adopted by everybody because it makes perfect sense. And it just fits the situation perfectly. Uh, it's all to do with Vault's digital revision management. Uh, it's the Triangle of Doom because it ruins your day when you see it. So what I'm going to do is take, uh, I'm going to take this assembly here, right? Fan2.iam, which is currently, uh, it's just a normal assembly with a couple of parts in there. So typical parent-child relationships. The assembly's work in progress. It's got a part in there, work in progress. And I want to release this assembly. Straightforward stuff. I want to release it. Now, one of Vault's golden rules is that you can't release a top level unless everything underneath it is also released either beforehand or at the same time. You can't have this released and that work in progress. Well, you can't, sorry, you can't send that to released whilst that's work in progress. So these all need to be released at the same time. Fine, not a problem, eh? Not a problem. So I'm gonna take the assembly, I'm gonna change state, and then wallop, <laughs> wallop. Vault smashes you in the face with a triangle of doom, and it's like, no, sir, no, you, want, you will not change this assembly to released. I will not, I'm having none of it. I'm not having it. So you can go, right, released, fine. Well, what's, what's the problem? Well, the problem is this part here has a triangle against it. And the triangle stops you. See, I'm clicking. I cannot change that to work in progress. If I select this top, this thing here, and select released, that part there stays a work in progress with a triangle next to it saying file is not the latest. And then when you click OK, uh, it'll say there's been restrictions. There's been restrictions, damn it. Click yes, and then it'll say, sorry, we're not doing anything. The assembly can't be released because the IPT is not released as well. And like, well, I was trying to release it, man. Why, why, why? And you always come out the other end of these thinking, why? And then that's, uh, so, I mean, so is Autodesk. I, I'm going to beat on you a little bit in this video because there is a lot here you could do better. It's dreadful, appalling product feedback again. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot better ways you could feed back information to the user, uh, a lot better ways you could handle this, because uh, the user always comes out the other end thinking, well, I don't understand what the hell is going on, and there's good reasons for that. So if I select change state on the assembly again, this triangle here, in a nutshell, right, for anybody that's still like completely confused as to what this means, the triangle of doom means that this part here is being used in this assembly here, right, so if you trace the line up, you get the fan2.iam but the triangle means that fan2.iam is physically referencing an old revision of this part that's what it means vault is vault has detected that the actual cad file for this assembly is still hooked onto and referencing an old revision of this assembly so vault is stopping you from releasing this assembly because this one here has been incremented in Vault. It's gone up a revision or it's, something's happened to it and Vault's saying, whoa, 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 you can't release this because your actual CAD file is still referencing an old revision of that file. Which, that's great. I mean, good, good. I'd, I'd, I mean, you wouldn't want to release this if the actual CAD file is still hooked onto an old revision. You don't want to be releasing models with old revisions in them when there is a new revision in Vault. You don't want that. What you do want is some better bloody feedback because it doesn't give you anything to go off. There's no revision letters here. You know, you can expand this, there's nothing there. You right click, you can't add column headers. There's nothing here, it just gives you a triangle. It says file is not the latest, grays the whole thing out. And then it's right, off you go, off you try, fix it yourself. And you're like, well, I don't, I've got nothing to work with here. And one triangle is not an issue. And one tri once you know how to fix this, one triangle is not an issue, you can fix it in, in a minute. But in a real world assembly where you've got maybe a 500 to 1,000 parts and assemblies, you might have 20, 50, 100 triangles in there. And that's a lot of work. That is a lot of work to fix. Most of the time, you don't know what the, what the parts are. You didn't design them. You've got no idea what they even are. 
uh, and you don't know why they've triangled, you don't know anything about that situation, but you're tasked with the job of fixing it, hence the triangle of doom. When you see them, you're like, my God, I really can't be bothered. I really could do without this, and I could really do with some better feedback in the product as to why it's there, what revision this file is referencing, and what the current revision is as well. That would, that would just, at a minimum, that would be nice. That would be nice. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how it happens. Because I would imagine a lot of people watching this are still really confused and they're like, I, I, I just don't, I, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> this is just black magic and dark arts to me. I don't know what you're talking about. Right, well, let's jump up to this assembly here, fan1.iam, which is all released. It is it is an assembly and all of its parts are also released. This is perfect world stuff. Everything's released, everything's signed off, everything is perfect. No triangles of doom, nada. Right, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take one of its parts and I'm going to up issue this part here to revision B work in progress. So let's go to fan bottom one, right? Take fan bottom one and then let's move that to work in progress. So that's going to up issue that to revision B work in progress. Fine. Okay, not a problem. However, however, this assembly hasn't been opened yet. Right, this inventor assembly has not been opened yet into inventor. So the actual CAD file, think of the assembly as a CAD file referencing parts, parts you've placed into that assembly. This CAD file is still referencing, it is still physically hooked onto the revision A released version of this part. In Vault, in a data management program separate to the CAD world, this file has been via metadata, right? This is just a property change right now. This file has gone up to revision B, work in progress, right? In terms of properties. The physical actual file that this assembly is referencing, it's placed into it, is still revision A released of this one. So when I select this assembly and select change state, I get the triangle of doom. It's, it's because this assembly is still referencing revision A. And you can see that it's, when and this this is what really confuses people is the select change state and then they can see fan bottom one is revision b it is work in progress but in the change state box fan bottom one it's saying released but it's not it's whip yeah but that's because this assembly the actual cad file is still referencing the released version of that part file and then you get the triangle of doom and then vault saying oh, it gives you no feedback it's not telling you anything we know, well, hopefully you know, hopefully you're following this, why that's happened. But in a in a in a world where you didn't do the the first change and these are someone else's files, you've got no clue, not a clue what's happened at this point. You just see a triangle, you see a grayed out thing, and you're like, I I just don't have the time to even begin to try and understand and look through the history and see what's happened. So um, that's what the triangle of doom is. There are other ways this can happen as well. So. Uh, I'll, I'll go through those in a second, but I'll show you how to fix it. To fix it, it is desperately I mean, it's so simple to fix it. It is, it is so easy. Uh, all you do is you just check out the assembly. When you check out the assembly and open it in Inventor, it then references in the latest version of the, the part, and then the triangle goes away. Simple as that, right? So let's take the assembly. Let's change it. I can't check it out, obviously, because the assembly itself is released. So we'll change the assembly to work in progress. Right, you still get all these warnings and errors saying, well, oh, some of the parts underneath are all still triangle of doomed and stuff. Well, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at this point. So the assembly is work in progress. Let's do change state. We're still getting the triangle of doom, right? Even though we've up issued this assembly to revision B in work in progress, it's still, the actual CAD file is still referencing the released IPT, even though that's now WIP. But let's open it up in Inventor, right? So we'll right click on this assembly, open it up in Inventor. And then what that'll do is Inventor now pulls in, well, sorry, it pulls out of Vault the released version of the uh, the fan, right? And that's when you start seeing the yellow exclamation marks because Inventor opens it up and goes, hang on a minute, hang on a minute, you told me I was, ex you told me that I was expecting a released revision A version of this part, but what I've actually pulled out is a work in progress revision B version of this part. That's not what I was expecting. And then you see this here and it says at the bottom of the tooltip, not the expected revision. Fine. All you do is just check it back in and then it clears the, the little unexpected thing. Everything goes back to normal. This assembly is now referencing revision B work in progress. Triangle of doom is fixed. So let's do a refresh. 
select fan one, do change state, triangle of doom's gone. This assembly is now referencing the, in, in the CAD world, it is now referencing work in progress revision B. So if I wanted to release this now, I can do done. That would release it. Okay, the other way the triangle of doom can happen is if somebody does a manual change revision on a part or an assembly. So, for example, fan one is referencing revision B of the, the, the IPT. Great, not a problem. Fine. All hunky dory. However, if I take this part and I select change revision and I forcefully bump this up to revision C, all right, that's now jumped from revision B to revision C, but my CAD file, right, this one that I've got open here, this model is still referencing revision B, right? The CAD file is still referencing revision B, but in Vault, that part there is now revision C. So now Vault's going to throw another wobbler when we hit change state, and it's going to go, oh, no, no, you can't remember what's going on here. And then, it's, so now we've got the triangle of doom again. File is not the latest. Your CAD file is referencing revision B of this part, but it's actually up to revision C. And you're like, for the love of God, can you throw me a bone? already can you just at least tell me what this means but don't, oh you can you get the triangle of doom file is not the latest and then you've got, you've got to do the same thing you've just got to simply go over to inventor check out the assembly and then you start getting triangles and whatnot in here yes yeah, fine okay right click on that get revision this is now revision c pull that down into your workspace check it back in and then everything's back to normal again your assembly is now referencing revision c work in progress of the part now when we change state triangle of doom is gone and we can now release it hunky diddly dory all right so that's pretty much that's pretty much what the triangle of doom is it is whenever your assembly or your drawing is referencing an old revision of a sub part and the, the, i guess and saws or desk but the, the ultimate problem here is your product's feedback if your product was able to tell the user what revision just a column in here just say, you know, there's a triangle here. What col you know, column? What version? What revision is your assembly referencing? B. What revision is it now? C. All right. Oh, that makes sense. Well, I, can, I know what that is now. I can go fix it. But no, no, no. Again, it's dreadful, appalling feedback in the product. Okay, there is a couple of other things that are worth mentioning. At the, well, actually, probably I would say one more thing. I think this video's sort of uh, gone on for long enough on a, on a pretty dry topic. But one other thing that's worth mentioning, and I was asked this question yesterday by one of the, the gaffers in, in our company, and that is when you've got an assembly that's work in progress, right? To change state on this, right? There's a, I, I want to release this assembly. But in order to release this assembly, I've got this file here which is work in progress right now. I don't want to have to wait until somebody finishes working on this before I can release this. Why can't I release this and use the last released version of this? Right, so what, what would that be? Well, we've taken this part here and we've incremented it from released A, then we went to whip B, and then I forcefully bumped it up to whip C. So the last official signed off approved built or bought revision is revision A, all right? So I wanna release this and I wanna use the released revision A of this part here. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? I don't know if it does, but it, that's kind of what I'm getting at here. Well, to do that, what you'd have to do is you have to check out your, well, let's do it in Inventor. It's probably a lot easier to do it in Inventor, all right? Let's check out the top level assembly. Right, the top level assembly is using work in progress revision C. So I can't release this whilst this part here is, uh, or whilst this assembly is referencing the whip revision C. So what we've got to do is we've got to swap out this part here with the released revision A. Now there could be modeling differences there. Since this part has gone to whip revision C, someone might cut holes through it, change the size of it, could have changed its material, whatever but we've got to replace it with whatever it was like whilst it was released at revision A, which might have been a year ago, for all we know. It's unlikely, days, weeks ago. Uh, but what you do is you right click on that part and then you say get revision. And then you say, right, currently we're using revision C work in progress, but I actually want to pull out of the vault, scroll down this little dialog box here. I want to pull down the last released revision of this part, which is that one there, released revision A. Click okay. 
and then you still get the unexpected revision thing here. Vaults. Uh, this is Inventor saying, "Hang on, well, what the hell's going on here? We were, we had revision C work in progress five minutes ago, and now I've got revision A released, huh?" But then you know best. You know best. You just check in your top level assembly, and then, and then, and then I'll tell you what. And then I'm splicing this in afterwards because I thought this is something which is worth mentioning on this topic, uh, with regards to pulling in. Uh, either the, the you know the whip version of the file or the last release version of the file rather than doing a get on the individual files what you can do uh, when you're doing an open from vault so if we use the fan as the example again so fan one uh, that's revision b you've got two options here right which is a button that a lot of people will have never pressed in their entire life and this this is the non-released biased or the released biased button so if we select this fan and then the default is non-released biased, it's going to download this assembly and all of the subparts are going to be the latest versions. It's going to be the latest WIP versions of all the parts. So we click open. Uh, yes, check it out. OK, yes, update properties. Uh, it's going to pull out the subpart for the fan bottom and it's going to be the WIP version, which is I've been playing around with it since I uh, edited the video, uh, but it's currently whip revision d now there is a released revision c of that part so rather than do right click get revision and then do the get that so rather than have to do that because you might have a dozen files that you want to just swap out with the released version rather than use the latest whip version what you can do right, i was going to undo this checkout you probably know where i'm going with this anyway you've just seen it. i've just shown you the button i clicked all right you go open open from vault select your fan assembly or whichever assembly it is you're working with and then you select released biased released bias means every sub part in this assembly pull out the last released revision of those parts so instead of pulling out whip revision d it's now going to pull out released revision c and reference that into the assembly instead of the whip d there you go so we've now got revision c released uh, that doesn't work if, I don't know if this is a defect or not, but it doesn't work if you've manually booked, remember about five minutes ago, I changed the revision of this part from B to C without going through a proper release manager, without going through, you know, release then work in progress, I just typed in the revision letter. It doesn't work when you do that. It has to be a proper revision uh, workflow change. Uh, but then you get this triangle here, and then this is where I'm going to continue with the video where I left off just before. So fine, you get the triangle there. That try This again is inventor and Autodesk and Autodesk. Ah, it's just like... Uh, that triangle there, although it is the exact identical triangle to what I'm talking about as the triangle of doom, it's a totally different meaning. <laughs> totally different meaning. That triangle there means that the copy of the... I think I might have lost a lot of people by this. By this point, that triangle there means that th this part in my workspace is an older revision of what is in the vault. So in the vault, this part here is whip revision C, but in my workspace, I have released revision A. And that triangle appears, which is a completely different meaning to the triangle of doom that you see in the change state box. It's just like, it doesn't need to be this complicated. No, it doesn't. It does not need to be this complicated. I can guarantee you that. It needs it's a fucking complete overhaul. It's dreadful. Trying to train this to people in an office is like it's like teaching Chinese to a hedgehog. It is horrible, horrible. Anyway, right. So we've replaced revision A. All right, we've, well, we've put revision A in, and we've checked this back in. So now, if we go over to Vault and then do another refresh, uh, select the assembly and hit Change State. This assembly here can now be released, and it's now using. The released revision A. Again, it would be nice if it had a revision letter in here so you could see I'm using released revision A instead of the current, because it's actually the current version of that part there is whip C, but we're going to release it using uh, released revision A. Uh, so that's how you would get, get around that. But that's, uh, it's, it's like, <laughs> come on, Autodesk, come on. Can you, Autodesk, if, I, I know you guys watch this and I, I, I do appreciate you guys watching this, but after watching this, after watching this, somebody has to just take a step back and go, yeah, it's, it's, this is unnecessarily complicated. It is. I know revision, digital revision management is complicated. It's it's quite complicated. You've got relationships and references and different versions, different revisions, and different states all over the shop. It's like spaghetti junction of, of metadata. It doesn't need to be as complicated, though. 
bit of extra feedback in the product. I, I don't know. I don't know. It doesn't need to be this way. And for people like me and a lot of the, the channel, the Autodesk channel, the resellers going and training people, this is horrible to do. Horrible. Trying to teach somebody new to vault digital revision management. It's dreadful. Anyway, 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 that's the triangle of doom. And that's what it means to fix it. All you do is just check out your top level. If, you, if you're not interested in whether or whether you want to be using the old revision, you just want to fix your problem, get rid of the triangle, reference the latest version, the latest revision, check out the top level, check it back in. It clears the triangle, it references the latest version of the part, and then you can you can just carry on with your life. But when you've got when you've got 50 triangles nested five levels down, it's horrible. It's really horrible to do it, but it's one of those things that caused it to be called the Triangle of Doom. Anyway, guys, that'll do it for this one. That's the Vault Triangle of Doom. Uh, let me know if you... <laughs> I was going to say, let me know if you want any more Vault videos, but after this one, <laughs> I'm not sure you will. I doubt it. Anyway, I'll see you in the next one. Toodles.